Hi guys, welcome to another Gigi Han video. Um, hello everyone. Hello, uh, today I'm very, very honored to have Dr. Kenneth Wong coming on board to my video. Thank you, Dr. Kenneth, for coming. And Dr. Kenneth, my sincere appreciation and gratitude to you and other frontliners who work throughout day and night to protect the right yet from the pandemic. Thank you very much. So Dr. Kenneth, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you very much, Dr. Gigi Han, for bringing me into this uh, short video session with you. Lah. So my name is Kenneth. I'm from uh, Selayang, Selangor. So I'm a medical officer currently in the ophthalmology department at Hospital Selayang. But I served at uh, PKRC, lah, Pusat Quarantine dan Rawatan COVID, Maib Sedang, from the end of May uh, till June. So I was there for one month and one week. So wow. So your Facebook post has gone really viral and you have been featured on Astro, Sinchu Daily, yeah. <laughs> Star, Suara TV today, all my media, all Bulan, so many among others. So congrats on getting Thank on you very the lines these two days. Dr. Kenneth, how does it feel? It feels uh, exciting, interesting, and also your phone will be exploding. Lah. Basically, your phone will be <laughs> ringing the whole time, ding, 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 ringing the whole time, then you have to answer or stuff. Yeah, but it's a very good experience to feel. Great, great, great. So uh, we need to do, we need to say about a disclaimer before we start this Q&A session. Uh, the disclaimer is that Dr. Kenneth and I have to make it clear that we are not influenced by the government. We are not influenced by any other parties or bodies in make, making this video. So no one in any form or method has influenced us whether or not to, to make this video or make this video skewed in any particular ways against our will. Is that correct, Dr. Kenneth? Yes, you are right. <laughs> okay, good. So what are we going to talk about today? Today, uh, we are going to talk about a documentary video online that went viral among Malaysians recently, uploaded by the news channel Al Jazeera. It was trying to shed darkness of negativity against the Malaysian government by claiming they are abusing the illegal immigrant community by utilizing the excuse of curbing the COVID-19 pandemic. So this documentary mainly centers around areas with barricade and barbed wires. What actually are these areas, Dr. Kenneth? So those areas are actually uh, enhanced MCO areas. Basically in those areas, uh, it is to prevent any movement in and out of the area. So nobody can move out, nobody can move in. Um, so this includes everyone, locals and also foreigners or, and also illegal immigrants. Nobody can move out of that place. So in this place, basically, um, uh, the government actually provide uh, necessities to the locals or to the people inside there. They actually provide rice, chicken and egg and different places actually got different uh, distributions from the government. So um, everyone is kept uh, and closed in a place. They try to paint a picture that the whole Malaysia is locked up this way. Is it true, Dr. Kenneth? No, not whole Malaysia lockout. I'm still walking around. Only certain areas. La. <laughs> Only certain yeah. areas where they actually lock when they see uh, spikes in cases. For example, the Selayang Pasar Borong, not, not very far from me, about 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes from me. They actually lock down the whole area. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, they are really painting a, uh, painting a picture that is not really reflecting the truth. Yeah. So, let's move on. Second question, the documentary gives an impression where Malaysia abuses illegal immigrants. There is a scene where an immigrant states that they are actually treated and valued only like animals. So Dr. Kenneth, is it true that they are mistreated? Can you share your experience while you were in the quarantine center with all of us? Yeah, certainly, um, this is a misunderstanding. La. We do not mistreat any parties. La. Parties basically is pendatang asing uh, tanpa izin, which is in English, it's called illegal immigrants. La. So, um, I was working in party for one month and one week. And initially, uh, it was locals only in my apps. Then after that, uh, eventually, when the cases spiked, we had about 700 to 800 plus party cases. So, there were so packed, so many patients. And... 
inside the center, we treated um, all of them for free. We treated them equally. We provided them food, like three meals per day in my Facebook post I posted last time. We actually provide, they actually have vegetable, chicken and, and rice in their meals and actually quite good. And also we provided clothes for them. Lah, and they actually stay in a clean bed, a new bed if they go in. Then after that, uh, they have aircon lah, in the wards. So we treated them actually as normal human beings. And we don't discriminate, uh, discriminate them as they say in the uh, Al Jazeera news. Very well said, very well said, Dr. Kenneth. So again, the doctor documentary tries to paint a picture that the authorities are actively hunting down, arresting and abusing illegal immigrants. What is your view regarding this? Okay, regarding this so-called hunting down, um, the government is actually just enforcing the rule of law, which is they are using their Immigration Act, the 1959 63. They're using that act to arrest illegal people because in any other country, any other country, any other country in the world, all of them got their own rules and all illegal immigrants will be arrested. Let's say if you go into a neighboring country without a passport or proper documents, you also will be arrested. So this so-called hunting down, they are not actually like pinning on them, hunting, hunting down on them, but it's actually to stop the spread of COVID-19 because many clusters were from all these areas with parties. So it was actually the main aim was to stop the spread of COVID-19 uh, instead of hunting down so-called uh, discriminating them. Okay, okay, that's, that's very clear. So once they are discharged from the quarantine center, RTKRC, right? So do you have any idea where they are sent to? What are the follow-ups, how they are treated and so on? Yeah, so uh, after they are discharged, usually we'll discharge them back to the depots lah, where they initially came from. So we will actually provide them uh, proper referral letters. For example, let's say if they have an underlying medical condition, because many of them actually got undiagnosed medical problems. When they come in, we will take blood for them. We'll actually take four blood tests for them. We actually take for them the full blood count. We check their kidneys. We check their liver. And also we check their uh, infective screening lah infective blood. So we actually find out many undiagnosed um, illnesses, especially liver problems. Then actually we would uh, provide them the referral letter or proper referral letter for them to go back uh, after when they leave the center, they can go for follow-up. And also we even provide them uh, antibiotics or whatever medication that they need to complete. Uh, let's say if they have like two more days of antibiotics, we will just provide them it and extra and they can go back with it. Very good, very good. In the video, they actually uh, accuse that all these depots are actually potential spots for new clusters. What is your opinion regarding this, Dr. Kenneth? Okay, so those depots actually, uh, they gather the people initially outside before they enter the depot. So most of them were actually uh, positive before they were, they were into the depots. They were swapped before they enter into the depots. So... Um, it is not because mainly because of the depots causing the rise in the cases, but it is because where the area they come from, the area where the party comes from, that there are many cases there, then all the patients move into the depots. This is, this is why. Mm. Yeah, okay, really good. So Dr. Kenneth, can you share with us some stories on your daily encounter with the parties, some interesting stories for us? So um, what we'll do every day is actually uh, we'll split ourselves up. Uh, one hall got, let's say one big hall, uh, we got two zones. So we'll split ourselves into zone A and zone B. So each zone got 200 patients. So 200 patients, oh. about six to eight doctors will take care of 200 patients. So we'll take turns to don in. Uh. Don means basically we wear that full Tyvek suit. Uh. That suit that you see that they wear, you know, like the astronaut, where they put it and then they zip up, that's called Tyvek. Uh. So we'll actually, um, half of us will actually go in half of us will stay outside. Lah. So we'll go in, review them. And most of them, you'll be surprised that they actually will um, be happy to see us. Lah. They will be like, they will salam us when they see us. It's not like what they say, you know, like parties hate us or we hate the parties. They're actually very nice people, normal human beings like us. We respect them and they respect us. Why see versa? So um, we will actually inside review them, treat them, give them medication and things and take their bloods and things like that. After that, um, reviewing them, we actually will go out 
and it is compulsory for us to have a shower when we come out. We'll have a very cool shower and we will smell good uh, when we come out after using the shampoo. No hot water, I'm okay, no? Huh? No hot water, la. it's cold water, Aye, it's like yeah. the tap one, you open, you'll come out. La. <laughs> very cold, very cooling. La. Yeah. So nowadays, right, a lot of the uh, vendors or shops, they are trying to set up all these disinfection chamber, disinfection boxes. Do you actually use that in the quarantine center and do you think they are actually useful? No, we don't use all those disinfection chambers la, because somehow after using the disinfection chamber, it is not very uh, effective, so-called effective la, in removing, in preventing COVID. La. What is more important is for you to wash your hands, for you to social distance. And that box is more like um, a marketing thing la, because when it's a trend, you know, you see people, the, the, the mist spray to your face, then you feel safe. But we don't know what they're spraying to your face. And maybe it enters your eye, then it enters your mouth, then you swallow it, then bigger things happen after that. Yeah. Yeah, and also when you are infected, the virus is actually inside your respiratory tract, your inside true, your body. True. You know, you spray outside. Uh, what what is it gonna do? So yeah, just to feel feel cooling only, right? Cooling effect only. Yeah. <laughs> feel good effect. Uh, feel good effect. Yeah, I would like to add on a little bit. Uh, it is also shown in the video that the livelihood of the immigrants are very much affected. You know, they they shoot all these uh, shots uh, regarding how difficult their life is. But this phenomenon doesn't just happen to the immigrants. Local Malaysians, regardless of race, are also equally badly affected. Many have lost their jobs, lost yeah. their livelihood, and we can only hope that the government, NGOs, and also the public will provide support for all those who are truly in need, like Mr. Alex, who has been featured in the controversial video itself. So we hope that the pandemic situation can improve day by day, in my opinion, which I think is already on the right track for recovery. So Dr. Kenneth, thank you again for coming on board. And thank you very bonus, much. No problem. There's a bonus question for me today to <laughs> ask you. And I'm sure um, many that are listening and watching <laughs> are interested and would like to know. So Dr. Kenneth, are you single and available? No, I'm taken, so I'm not available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so so many girls out there will be so sad after today, yeah. <laughs> no mind, don't sad, don't sad. <laughs> yeah. So there are, thank you for clarifying all the facts for us today. So if people Welcome. want to find you online and want to follow you, where can they find you? I only can be found in one place, which is Facebook. I'm not in Instagram, I'm not in Twitter. Uh, you can only find me in Facebook. Lah. You can type my full name there, Kenneth Wong Chen Fei. So, really busy doctor. Only one social <laughs> media. <laughs> yeah. So, again, yeah, thank you so much for coming on board and maybe we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, Dr. Thank Kenneth. you very much. Bye. See you. Bye.